You know, this ended up on my timeline. A tweet from Daily Fighting Game Supers. Elena's healing, Ultra Street Fighter 4, 2014. What a great super, huh? Look at how much health I got back. Oh my god. Beats, what a song, dude. Your rhythm was great. She's so nice. Yeah, it is me. This is me playing Elena. We were just talking about the era that's happening right now, which is the transition era into Street Fighter 6 where everybody's like, all right, now that Street Fighter V is gone, it's time for real footsies. The OGs are coming back. Like Street Fighter V sucks. Street Fighter VI is going to be tight. But the same thing happened from Street Fighter IV to Street Fighter V, and it will just happen in the next game and the next game. And I think something that maybe a lot of people don't even know is that Street Fighter IV, looking back at it, a lot of people just didn't like Ultra. It had vanilla when the game came out, Street Fighter 4. It had Super, AE, AE 2012, and Ultra. Throughout all of them, there's people who obviously liked the game, didn't like the game. But Ultra, I think, is pretty widely considered a bad version. Like, people don't like Ultra that much. And I think it's because a lot of the changes felt really ham-fisted. They were, like, really strange. And a lot of the characters they added, basically all of them, had a lot of problems. A lot of their hurt boxes were really weird. Elena is a great example. Like, comboing her is really hard. And some moves just do not hit her. She just ducks under lots of stuff. The Capri's hurt boxes and poisons, even Relento to an extent, they're all a little bit weird. And the system changes, I think a lot of people did not like that much. One of the big things people would have wanted in the update was changes to the power level of some of the strong characters. And red focus was just like, any character that's strong got stronger. If your character was not that good, they probably didn't gain as many uses uh, for red focus as like Yun. What is red focus? So this is a focus attack. Focus attack has armor that lets you absorb stuff. And then if it hits them, there's a crumple that gets blown up if they do moves that hit multiple times to break the armor. Gets blown up by that, right? Regular focus costs you no meter. You can do this for free. Red focus toss costs two meters and you can absorb everything. It also can be used to combo extend and stuff like that. One of the best uses of red focus in the game. Yeah, he worked for it by hitting standing medium punch in neutral. Anyway, let's talk about Alina a bit. Part of the reason why this character was so demonic is this move right here, this jab. This move is three frames, right? Which is the fastest as any normal. As you can see, the recovery on it is absurd. It's not a low, but the range on it is humongous. Like basically, if you had no ability to play footsies whatsoever, this move made you the, a footsies god. You just box him out from so far. Like, look at how far away he's just getting jab, jab. Like you whiff punish with it and like you can combo out of it meterlessly into good damage and Oki. It's probably the best fighting game jab I've ever used. Her crouching medium punch, also extremely good. It combos off of her jab. And this move is better than like most crouching medium kicks in the game also. Even from really far away, do mallet smash, which is like a 14 or 15 frame overhead. And then combo off it. She also, this move is her standing medium punch, incredible anti-air. So she could just sit here and do this the whole time into this. Like she, and she's a wall. It's so hard to get in on her. If there is a button that beats her, her crouch or her standing medium punch, she has an EXDP. Some characters can zone her, but she has really good anti-fireball moves too. She has a slide. It goes under fireballs. And as you can see, will work from really far away. And you can also make it relatively safe depending on the spacing. This game doesn't have a buffer. So like punishing things like this is pretty hard. She also has this. This is EX Rhino Horn. Rhino Horn is projectile invincible. And that's not to count some of the, the things that people always talk about. The big one that always people talk about is healing, right? So healing, this heals her based on how long the ultra bar is. She can also cancel the healing. She doesn't have to do it. Uh, she doesn't have to do the full thing. If I hit Ryu away with spin slice like this and then do this, even if he quick rises, it doesn't matter. He can just, you know, he's like, all right, well, she healed. But maybe we just do this. Heal and then cancel the healing and then still meet you. And because of the way ultra gauges work, they go up as you get hit. You can build up another healing in the same round. It is not uncommon to heal two, twice around. You can see here that if Ryu is just trying to zone me from full screen and I do this and I absorb some fireballs, 
Like, I already am just vibing, and I have an ultra, right? The other thing about this character is that her mix-ups are ridiculous. This move is, as you can tell by looking at the screen, I'm sure, extremely fast overhead. It's multi-hitting, so if Ryu tries to focus attack, it'll break the armor, right? And she can combo off of it, and she can loop it as well. For as much meter as you have basically right it's minus five on block which is punishable but it's really hard to do her regular combos if you're just con uh confirming something like this look at the corner carry on that she can also just take a hard knockdown on this and then do a like a left right mix up she just like jumps in and then she's above your head and it's really hard to see but she also has lows so this is a low right and this, they all are different versions. So punishing them on block is really hard when you don't know if it's this, this, or this. And this one, she can focus in the middle of it, right? And just either combo or be safe and do more stuff. And Street Fighter 4 is not really a game that has messed up overhead low mix-ups on a footsie character like this. Besides having Mallet Smash, she has two grounded overheads. First of all, you may notice this goes far as hell. But when she knocks you down, she can actually just do these overheads as a meaty and combo off them. Yeah, so that's a two hit combo. Pretty good, I have to say. Her combo damage is actually pretty good too. In the corner, she can do stuff like this and link DP after, or if she gets like a big hit, she can do and, and link after. This does a lot of damage too. She can do it pretty consistently because she's just walking around hitting this jab over and over and just pestering you the whole time. She builds a ton of meter. She has a ton of life because she gets to heal all the time. She's like the tankiest character in the game, basically. And she has really, really, really good grounded buttons. Her, I like this move too. Oh man. And her back heavy kick too will be a lot of low attacks. Look at how far away her back throw puts you. If you want to talk about a back throw incident, I would say her biggest weakness is some characters can zone her so a few and people will drop shit with her because some of the execution is droppable i don't think it's like that hard probably but that's probably about it yeah her survivability i mean there are characters that just struggle to hit her with like stuff from anywhere <laughs> i like that it's whiffing over me for so long that i'm able to block it it did miss one of the times it might oh my god that beat it what the fuck yeah, she did get a fix for her hurt boxes. Before, I think Viper's burn kick basically didn't hit her. Oh, Dan kicked. This used to not hit her, if you're wondering, chat. This is what it was like before. Viper's burn kick also didn't hit her, but they fixed it because obviously this... This is pretty bad. I mean, even still in the current version, you saw that it didn't hit. When I just hit crouching jab, it just made the move miss. But then also her walk speed is some of the best in the entire game. And her backdash is a loony. This is, it's fucking Zappa backdash. Like she just holds back for a second and she's across the whole screen. Her backdash was also quite hard to chase because of her hurt box. Like a lot of times people would try to OS it and it didn't hit correctly. And then she'd crouch and like it would hit weird. She has like the Faust syndrome where she's really small when she crouches, but really tall when she walks back. So like when you try to hit her with stuff, the, the spacing of it is particularly difficult. Standing and crouching with her like this changes the spot where she gets hit by the dive kick by a lot. It's really like, yeah, it's fucked up. To talk about the, the one of the reasons why people didn't really like some of the changes in this game at a system level. One of the big things about the game was that characters would just get knocked down and get unblockable over and over. She can just unblockable the Shoto and do this. Super jump, light kick, and then it unblockables them. The way the unblockables worked in this game, you would try to block like by holding left, for instance, and then you would it would hit you the opposite side. So then you try to block by holding right, and it hits you on the opposite side because your like hurt box gets changed. So like technically they're blockable, but like it's not really. They couldn't fix the hurt box issue that made the unblockables exist, right? So one of the features they added was delayed wake up, which you can delay your wake up so that it's no longer the same timing. So the unblockables don't work, right? The problem with this, because the delay timing is static, almost every character, like she could just throw a kunai. Like she would super jump and then see it and then hit throw the kunai instead. Or you can like do something like that and then do the same thing. Most characters could like whiff a jab and then still get the unblockable. It didn't really fix 
what a lot of people wanted. The difference between Yana and Elena, I think, is that Elena was easier. If it wasn't the case that you could play Elena very, like, simply, then I think it would probably not make people so mad. Yana was a pretty wild character, though. Like, strong characters are all, in that sense, like, um, you know, you, you think, like, damn, they're pretty much good at everything. But Elena was like a defensive footsies character who just dominated mid-range so badly and her mix-ups were high-low mix-ups that were extremely potent and really strong and she could heal herself. So like she can just smoke you by just chilling. She just vibes and then you're just like, I would like to leave. <laughs> Too bad SF6 has no one frame links. SF4 was the last game to filter the scrub. We all know that you can't hit a one frame link off of Able Step Kick, then you're not able to play fighting games. Clearly, every single other aspect of the fighting game doesn't matter. It just matters if you can hit a one frame link. Yeah, this game was the scrub game because it's so easy to do DPs in this game. In this game, people would meme all the time about how you can just mash and get DPs, and everybody had DP FADC to be safe, you know? Throwing up and crying because a new game has a dash macro. Just vomiting everywhere.